I'm with Terence, who goes by De Poets across many social medias. The man is a titan and literally a legend in his own lifetime. Oh, oh wow. Um, okay, big, big words. Yeah. Let's see if I can fulfill those words uh, in this interview. <laughs> I've just been talking to Paul and I've just been talking to Paul and Kyle mm -hmm. about the Zen 5 experience. What's your takeaway? They are mad keen on the desktop side of things, and I know you are too. Mm -hmm. However, laptops, what did you think, particularly about StrixPoint? I'm more about longevity, right? So I want to see a laptop that will just always be connected. This is my dream. Always uh -huh. be connected, last three, four days, and being able to just handle just your average workload. Um, I know we're a bit far from that right now, mm -hmm. but I think the direction they're going with AI, teaching developers how to offload certain things from the GPU onto the NPU, it's going to be a big, basically multi-generational leap in performance for mobile devices. Because GPUs, we all know they're very kind of power hungry, but these NPUs, as they're getting more and more efficient, um, we're getting multiple X's of efficiency with the proper workloads being put onto them. So. I want something thin, something very light, we're used to that terminology, but something that's just going to be a powerhouse for certain tasks and last multiple days. Now, I know you're quite a keen gamer. We know you yes. like your spacecrafts. Yes. I had assumed that you would be a grunty gaming laptop merchant, so a thin and light and multi-day battery life mm -hmm. as an aspiration. Mm -hmm. th this is playing completely into their wheelhouse. They, they kind of, AMD, when they were showing off laptops, mm -hmm. had to once in a while allude to laptops in 15 mil thinness or thickness, and they didn't say it, but they're in video graphics. Mm -hmm. But they've also got 11 mil thin laptops and one and a half kilos, which in your world's three pounds. Um, now I understand, yes. Yes, 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 <laughs> slightly over three pounds. The question being is, mm -hmm. are those laptops close to what you want to see in terms of screen and such like, or have they still got a distance to go? Overall, I think laptops are multiple categories, right? So you have your kind of gaming laptops that are right now going to be heftier, thicker, going to need better cooling, and may not be able to do all the tasks you want, but it'll be close to a desktop in terms of just being mobile. Then those ultra lights, those thin and lights, those will struggle with certain AAA games, obviously. Um, some games will pay, play perfectly fine at 1080p, you know, and, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but it may hit the battery life very, very hard. Overall, I think it's always going to come down to the right hardware for the task at hand. If you know you're traveling halfway around the world and you're not going to have any time for gaming, bring your thin and light and it'll run DaVinci Resolve or whatever perfectly fine and you'll get great battery life. But if you're like, yeah, I'm going to have a lot of downtime, I want to play my favorite games like Star Citizen, very intensive in terms of the hardware requirements, yeah, you're going to need kind of a beefy laptop with a dedicated GPU and so those thin and lights aren't really going to cut it all that much. So yeah, right, right hardware for the task at hand. On the desktop side of things, mm -hmm. they, they did talk about Epic, but we kind of let that one go past yeah. us. because we we'll Yeah, briefly. <laughs> on the 9000 desktop processor front, however, mm -hmm. 16, 12, 8, 6 core exactly as we knew from Computex, no mention yet of 3D processors, and they did talk about motherboards, but we don't know, they're coming in September, yeah. we imagine. Mm -hmm. So therefore, a drop-in replacement processor. Does that sound to you like a good idea launching just processors to drop in in your existing system? Or would you prefer to see it a whole tranche of products, uh, 3D, non-3D, and motherboards all in one big hit? I think part of it comes down to the practicality of technological developments and their supply chain. So I'm not going to complain too much about X3D not coming out the same exact time because those will definitely eat into the sales for the non-X3Ds. And not everybody needs X3D. You know, Some people are not going to be able to tell the difference between a 9950X and a 9950X3D based on them playing Minesweeper, right? So um, I know some people always will want the, the, the greatest whatever comes out tech-wise. And I think the from what we can tell, the 9950X seems very impressive with the IPC uplift and uh, some of the new architecture features that they will have, and more of that information is coming online too. But X3D is really going to be continued to be marketed toward gamers. So I think the patient gamer is going to bypass this current 9950X or 9800X or whatever, um, and just wait for the X3Ds. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. And uh, again, right hardware for the task at hand. That's what I'm always kind of preaching on my channels. 
So if you are a true gamer, you will probably already know what titles through YouTube research and all that kind of stuff, what titles will actually utilize the X3D because there's plenty of titles that don't where you won't tell any difference whatsoever in terms of your FPS if you have an X3D chip or not. Uh, so it, a lot of it is like, hey, I have the newest, I have the brightest X3D or whatever it may be, and people are happy about that, but are you fully utilizing the resources based on the games or applications you're actually using? So that's where research comes to play. And buying something day one may be fun, and I do it all the time, trust me, but taking a step back and be like, hey, maybe I don't need the 9950X 3D, maybe I only need the 9700X for everything that I do, and if I get anything higher in, I'm just kind of wasting money because I'm not doing anything to use anything faster than what the 9700X can do. You know? And did you think that clearly AMD was intending to take the wind out of Intel sales for the Arrow Lake launch, which is coming in some months' time, mm. which is going to be called Core Ultra 200? And I can't get my head around those new naming schemes just yet. Everybody needs to work on their naming schemes, but yeah. But in terms of did they take the wind out of the sales of Arrow Lake before it's even been talked about, do you think AMD has moved the dial in the in direction of AMD, or are we going to wait to see what Intel has to tell us? Well, I'll answer it this way. So we just did an overclocking session with Ellen 2 uh, liquid nitrogen, where they were overclocking, I think it was at the 9950X, uh, and um, the previous record was the 7950X running at 6.7 gigahertz, and the 9950X beat it at 5.9 gigahertz. So that's a great uplift, and I love competition, but we're going to have to wait a bit longer to see if Intel has something to truly compete against it for a lot of particular tasks. Um, now, there's always going to be certain things that Intel will be able to show that, yeah, this application and these settings, we're knocking it out the park. AMD does the same thing, you know, NVIDIA does the same thing, and, it, you know, everybody has their, their benchmarks that they're just the top dog on. Um, but in general, again, it's right hardware for the task at hand. Um, traditionally, if somebody was doing a lot of um, you know, H.265 you know, encoding, decoding, Intel was probably the way to go. But now with AMD, they've really stepped it up. Maybe it doesn't matter as much. You know? And the differences may be kind of small because both are really, really fast. So then you have to look at what's actually <laughs> uh, costing you more money in the long run with the power bill, right? that may be a, a, a substantial consideration as well. Or if you're living in LA, like me, you know, it's 100 degrees today. So you might want a processor that's not running as hot to heat up your room. Uh, so there's a number of considerations. 500 watts of processor, or, or oh, no, no, that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah, 350 yeah. watts of processor, 300 plus watts of GPU, 800 watts at the wall socket. The heat has to go somewhere. Yes. Terence, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh. Where can people find you on your socials? Uh, well, I go by DePoets, D-A-P-O-E-T-S, you know, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all, all the socials. And uh, yeah, happy to reach out and help as much as I can when it comes to weird troubleshooting things. Um, I can't answer everybody's questions question, but when I see frequently asked questions, I love making videos answering those questions. Many thanks for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah.